Hello, Dr. Mike here, and this is Chapter 16 on Environmental Ethics. I want to talk to you just a little bit to get you started on your reading today, and to uh, which is your best source of information. I mean, we don't have 18 weeks for the class, which would normally be the, the class that this would encapsulate. So basically, I want to just kind of get you over the rough spots, get you encouraged uh, to read and to uh, pay attention to the materials, watch the TED Talk, and I think you get a pretty good grounding on what we're talking about in each each uh, each of these segments. I realize that three and four chapters a week is a lot, uh, but we also are trying to do a speed uh, movement through the materials. So we're taking six weeks when it would normally be 18. So you have to double up a little bit and uh, just do your very best at reading. Uh, today we're talking about environmental ethics, which is one something of, of great interest to me. Uh, I come from uh, a background of a pastor for 20 years and it always just amazed me that the church uh, and religion want to bury their heads in the sand on environmental ethics and uh, not talk about it. They deny global warming, deny weather change, deny the ozone layer depletion, all of those things. And, and there's really no real reason why, other than just to be stubborn, uh, that you would do that. And now you and I are now seeing the results of that in the 70s and 80s. We probably could have done things in the world to change it as late as 1996 when Bill Clinton uh, proposed that we sign on to the Kyoto Accords. And again, Mr. Obama did the same things. We failed to do that, failed to ratify. And so now we're seeing very harsh weather patterns, uh, deaths from that, tornadoes, storms, all of those things that you're encountering where you live are a direct result of global warming and the melting of the polar ice caps and the melting of glaciers. Those are visible things that we can see. And for us to look at things that are happening that we can see with our eyes and understand and still be in denial is really uh, a, a part of the, what goes on in our world today, not only in politics and religion and, and science and everything else, where it's just denial basically. And so we want to think about that as a part of your ethical understanding that you know that that the idea of having an environmental policy and environmental action uh, would be uh, would be a, a good thing, I think, on the part of Americans. Even though I think it may be too late, I think we may have already missed the window that we could have, uh, you know, we could have done something meaningful about that. And now we're seeing the the catastrophic results of of what's going on in our world. So let me show you some slides for a moment, uh, just to get you started. Uh, first of all, uh, and when we talk about environment, we're talking about our surroundings and our area, uh, what goes on in space, what goes on around us. All these things have an effect one upon another. Uh, there's also collection of materials with various physical, chemical re interactions that we have to be very careful of in our world that we don't let those become rampant. We don't pollute our waterways and our rivers. Very interesting uh, event a few years ago. They were expecting a hurricane to hit New Jersey full on, which is relatively rare. And there was a story that came out that was really equally as interesting. And that was that they have a problem with garbage and trash and especially with medical waste. Now, you guys are very much in, in aware of that because a lot of you work in medical facilities, but things like needles and and uh, syringes, all these kind of things that go in the little box on the wall, those have to be disposed of. They don't just disintegrate. And so they go to a landfill or they go somewhere and get buried near earth or, or, you know, I don't know if they can burn them because of giving off toxic things to the air. And, and so they're kind of caught with that. But in New Jersey, at any rate, they hired these big barges to haul their garbage and to hold their garbage. So they just dumped their garbage on these giant scows they're out at sea waiting for the storm to hit. And the fear was that if the storm hit, turned the ship over or sank it, that all of that waste would end up on New Jersey beaches. So you can see something of the quandary we have with trash and waste and all these chemical interactions. And, and they, intervene, they intervene with forms of life. I mean, there is a, a plastic dump, if you will, for lack of a better term, in the Pacific Ocean that is now the size of the state of Texas and uh, these larger fish like whales and sharks swallow that, get it into their intestinal system and kill them. And so there's a lot of animals that get killed along the way from that. 
When we think about environment, we think of, about intrinsic or inherent value. I mean, some places are worth a lot to us, and then others are, are there because they are part of uh, our heritage, our tradition, national parks I'm thinking about. Uh, instrumental value. And, and so there's a lot of value in, involved with this. And it's also a decision about whether we are kind of man-centered or environmental-centered. We're very much human-centered on this planet. It's all about me and mine and my four and no more. And we usually look at this from a cost-benefit analysis kind of thing. Well, what is the greater good? What is the greater bad? Uh, so when you think about that, it's pretty much how they, they kind of uh, line this stuff up. Just think about though, uh, if you, your, you or your family or whatever what kind of uh, living arrangements you have, if you threw out two bags of garbage a week, which is kind of a standard, some of you probably do four. Think about five and a half billion people on the planet. If every family threw out two bags of garbage, what I mean, it would be un unfathomable. How do you deal with that? Where does that go? It has to go somewhere. Most people don't ever think about when it leaves their driveway, where does that go? What happens to it? Does it get into the water? Does it get into, and so people are not very careful about things. You know, we've had a problem, I think I may have mentioned before, with our young people now sexually maturing at eight and nine years old when it used to be 13 and 14. And that comes from, first of all, people throwing hormones or flushing them down the toilet. How many of you flush old medications down the toilet? Those go into the water supply. People drink those. They affect them. We we did we feed our animals hormones to grow them out quickly. So we have chicken and beef. You know they're they're uh, pushed to grow and get bigger quicker. So all these things have an effect on the environment of the planet. And uh, now we have ozone layers in the planet from the use of carbons from our cars and from cattle farms and everything else you can think of that are eating holes in the lining around the earth that make it let in more heat and make it hotter. So we talk about things in terms of climate change, uh, our climate, and you say, well, that's only one degree of temperature. That is true, but we're only talking about one degree. But do you realize that our planet is on such a very tight rope as far as existence that it takes very small quantities to, to make a difference? Think about our planet uh, sustaining life. If we're in a particular spot that if we were one degree closer to the sun would burn up or one degree further away from the sun would freeze to death. Uh, the, the polar ice caps, the planet in it increases in temperature one degree and one degree is enough to melt the polar ice caps and the glaciers and all these other different things. It does not take much. Just think about what it takes to change your body. You get a headache, you take a Tylenol. That's a very small piece of technology. It is a technology, by the way. The technology always has side effects and one Tylenol can it hurt your liver. But that one little pill can go into your stomach, get into your brain, stop your head from hurting. Uh, it doesn't take very much for us to be affected. One very small pill can change a person's entire, entire outlook. So there's a lot of pieces to this, the ozone depletion, the waste disposal and pollution, wilderness preservation, why do you think we have these large, large, large uh, national parks? It's because if we didn't, there'd be some company building houses on top of every square inch of them. You realize that the old faithful geyser in Yellowstone Park, before the federal government stopped them, they were building a grand hotel there with the geysers in the yard of the hotel. And can you imagine what they would have been like today had we not preserved that area? Because human beings not only want to see it, they'll trash it. I mean, we have people all the time that, that spray paint priceless things. Somebody the other day in Rome, some teenager, I was going through as a part of a tour and writing his name on the, the Colosseum. My God, that's that's thousands of years old and we don't need graffiti on, on stuff like that. But people just don't have any concept of taking care of the planet we live on. We're like a bunch of wild animals that run across it and just devour it and use it up and throw it aside. But we, we're about reached the end of that. Uh, if things don't change dramatically. We'll never be able to recover. Part of that, we talk about global justice. And, uh, you know, there are some, some nations of the world that are way behind. Some countries are way behind. 
Uh, but if they caught up, what it would do to us as far as uh, global warming and stuff concerns, not even known yet. They could, you know, are already with the development in India and China, they're buying up every every gallon of oil and gas on the market. So what if Africa came along at that particular rate and began to do the same? There would not be enough. There'd be wars over materials that we that we hold on to. So that's kind of the foundation. You're going to read by several different philosophers in the book about different cases that will help you to understand this. And I hope you will give some some careful thinking to the environment, environmental waste. And while most of that is above our pay grade, there are some things that we do that if another of us did it, it would be worthwhile. So let me encourage you to think about that. Okay, see you tomorrow. Thanks.